Well, as usual, the rack is rocking for the Scarlet Knights as they get ready to take on 10th-ranked Purdue. Boilermakers coming in at 10-2 on the year, 3-1 in the Big Ten. Scarlet Knights 8 up and 3 down and 3-2 and in the conference. Rutgers coming off the win over Indiana on Friday night, 29-7. Rutgers winning 8 of 10 bouts that evening, and Purdue... Winning in big fashion over Maryland, 37-4 down at College Park. Won 9 of 10 matches. It was their biggest conference margin of victory since 2012. Yeah, Purdue's got some, uh, not, no pun intended here, Lou, something <laughs> boiling <laughs> here in 2019-2020. Uh, uh, I mean, but Purdue's one of those teams that's been hanging around the middle of the Big Ten for quite a while. Uh, not really in the basement, but they've they, they've made a threat towards the top. I mean, they're looking really good this year. You know, a handful of ranked guys, of course, two guys in the top ten. And of course, uh, Christian Bruner at 197. He's a top five guy. Outside shot at a title this year. So, I mean, I, I, I got to tell you, Purdue is coming in. Guns are blazing. Rutgers are going to have to put it all together today to knock off the Boilermakers and jump them in the Big Ten standings. His head coach, Tony Erslin, in his sixth season at the helm of the Boilermakers. Makers. He's been voted the midseason coach of the year by Flow Wrestling. So his team obviously. He's doing a, he's doing a good job. Yeah, yeah, he's doing a good job. His team has won 10 of their first 12 bouts. So we start today at 149 pounds. Gerard Angelo for the Scarlet Knights. 12 and 8. The redshirt freshman out of Bergen Catholic coming off a huge win on Friday night, defeating 22nd ranked Graham Rooks of Indiana. Going up here against Nate Linux. Nine and six on the year. Richard Sr. out of Grand Rapids, Michigan. The yeah, Limix is actually the backup this year to Griffin Perriott, who's uh, not wrestling today, but Limix is no slouch, though. He's a two time NCAA qualifier, so don't let that 9 6 record fool you. So we're underway here at Rutgers. It's a good start from Angelo being the aggressor on that opening shot. Gotta be careful with these upper body ties, though. Limix can easily counter that. Mentioned Angelo's big win on Friday night against a ranked opponent, so he's got to be feeling pretty pumped up going into today's action and leading things off for the Scarlet Knights. Yeah, you saw he's being again he's being aggressive to start things out with that single leg attempt. He's going to go to those underhooks as usual. Loves the big, loves the big move. It's the takedown. Lennox gets the first two points. You want Angelo to try to get his leg free as Lennox has that. Left leg of Angelo caught right now. If Angelo can get that free, get his legs uncrossed, he can work back to his base, get up, and then uh, get out for one. And whistle. Oh, it looks like Angelo is shaking up. Yeah, Linux was cranking hard on that knee, and this is what you don't want to see if you're Rutgers. And have Angelo. Hurt here. Depth's already hurting at 149. Santos uh, in and out of the lineup with the uh, coming back from his knee injury as well. And uh, at this rate, you just want to hope that Angel can finish off the match here. He's getting checked out by trainer Johnny Taggart. The official right away. Made the whistle quickly. As we saw that Angelo was in some kind of discomfort. Def definitely stay. Not a good start for the Scarlet Knights, and obviously you hope Angelo is okay he, and he can continue. In it. But if he, can stay, if he can't continue, then yeah, that's six points for all due. So he's going to be able to shake it off here. Moving the ball, so that's a good sign, obviously. And they'll restart here. Yeah, Lemix has choice after the injury, so he, obviously he's going to choose down, try to get out for one, get an extra point here. Minute 30 remaining here in the first period. Hanging on. Yeah, it's not quite one of those situations yet early in the match where if you're Angelo, you want to cut him right away because then you're down 3 nothing in the first period. You want to try to ride him out here, cut uh, Limix's riding time and try to ride him out to the end of the period and get some momentum back for the second. Angelo, Got a cradle attempt here. Angelo hanging on here. Limix tried to break free. He still has that leg, Angelo does, but Limix doing a good job attacking the hands and the wrists to avoid getting caught in that cradle. But Angelo doing a nice job riding so far off the side. And there's the point for the escape by Limix. He goes up 3 nothing. 
And not a bad sequence there for Angelo. But unfortunately, of course, when you get hurt and your opponent gets a choice, now, now you're in a bit of a hole. So if you're Angelo, you want to try to get one takedown here before the end of the period. And, but you got to watch Lewis's counterattacks here. 35 seconds left in the first, our first bout of the afternoon. In front of another big crowd here at the rack. Oh, nice throw attempt there from Angelo. Almost stuck him. And there's two for Gerard Angelo. So he's down 3-2. And Angelo loves those pass buys and throw buys, slide buys, and many different versions of it. But if he hits those, I mean, Angelo is usually going to get you down to the mat at least for a takedown, if not stick you. That's a great momentum swinger for Gerard Angelo. The crowd appreciates the effort as the first period comes to an end. And a roar from the crowd here at the rack. I'll get the crowd back into it. That was beautiful. Watch that. Throw right by. Limix wasn't ready for it. You see Angelo almost lock up that bundle arm. If he was able to just to pull that even further, might have been able to expose Limix's back there for, a near, for some near fall points. And it's a good opportunity, Lou, as well for Angelo. Now that he's down 3-2 to two after getting that takedown, if he gets out for one year, we're tied up, and it's like that injury never happened. And he spins away and gets the one. <laughs> Man, he almost got stuck on his head there. That was pretty, a little, little funky right there. Pretty athletic move there by Gerard Angelo. And he ties the score three. You can definitely feel the momentum swinging a little bit and, and pointing towards Rutgers at the moment. Angelo, of course, cutting off that 3-0 hole. Being able to tie up the match with a late takedown now that escape. Let's see if he can go back to work here in neutral. Linux. Coming up with a big takedown there, gets two, and regains the lead, 5-3. Yeah, you don't see too many sprawls from Angelo. He likes to, you know, he, he, he almost likes to bait guys into him so he can toss them and use their momentum against them or, you know, do one of those things where he's going to get into a scramble situation, lock around the waist with the crotch area and try to turn guys over and get into that scramble right now and obviously right there. That's the second time today, actually, in this match that Limix is able to break through the defense of Angelo. 45 seconds left in the second. And the riding time, of course, is not a factor yet, but if you're Angelo, you don't want to hang out down here. Got that one leg caught. See Lemix figure, four, figure fouring it. Just don't get tilted here late in the period. Fifteen seconds left. You gotta be careful if you're Angelo. In a short time, do not get tilted here. That really burns out pretty much all of your effort at the end of that first period. And the second period comes to an end with Nate Limix up by two. He leads it five to three. There's that initial escape from Angelo just rolling through. Just tried to roll through and he got stuck on his head, but able to kick out of it. So that was very nice. And then you see Lewis's takedown. Angelo did a good job rolling right to his belly right there before he was able to give up or before he gave up near fall point. So keeps it a two-point lead for Limix. So we go to the third period here in this opening match of the afternoon. 149. And they originally ruled that a caution for, for a false start on Limix. Then the head official said red, and then you see the other official go green. And now they're going to change the call. Looks like Limix was the one who, of course, went a little bit early. So false start called on Limix. It's almost like football. Is that a false start or is that an offsides <laughs> unabated to the quarterback? <laughs> job by Angelo to return Limix today. He's, he's got him seated, see if he can just keep this position. And come up with that lift. And both out of the circle. Yeah, if you're not going to be able to keep Limix flat on the mat and try to go, go for your tilts if you're Angelo, at least cut this riding time as much as possible. I mean, it is under a minute, but you want to cut it down and then, I mean, if you're not going to be able to, again, tilt him, might as well cut him away and go back to your neutral offense and score points that way, just like that. And one for Linux. He's now up by three. It's a very important match here in this uh, bout in this, in this match. 
There's two more for Lennox. Goes up eight to three. And you saw Angelo just try to go back to that scramble and tried to elevate that ankle and go into a cradle and just and just do something. But Lennox able to break through the scramble defense of Angelo. Now it's a now you got to be careful for Angelo because you don't want to give up even a tilt here. Now it's a five point lead for Lennox. He's going to build up this riding time. Once it goes over a minute, he essentially has a six point lead. So any tilt is going to lead towards bonus points for Purdue. And if you're Rutgers, you don't want to be down in a 4-0 hole after the first match. Final minute of period three. And Gerard Angelo has a big hill to climb here. He's down by five, eight to three. And as Nick just mentioned, essentially down by six. His riding time is up to a minute 20. Yeah, not locked yet, but it's close for Lemmick. So again, if you're Angelo, you cannot afford to get your back exposed now with, under, with, with uh, 40 seconds to go here. And if you're not going to win, you have to do your team a favor and save those bonus points. 30 seconds left. And you see Lemmick's trying to set up that cradle. He's getting that knee and head closer to each other. This will be a great start for Purdue if Lemmick hangs on to win with a ranked wrestler coming up next in Kendall Coleman. Andrew's got to be careful. He's gonna, doing a good job not getting his back. He's supposed to get rolled through here. That's going to be reversal. Wow. It's two. For Angelo, but he's down 8 6, and he will run out of time. Nate Lennox hangs on to win 8 to 6, and Purdue takes a 3 0 lead in the match. I guess they ruled that, uh, I guess they ruled that an escape there for Angelo before he was able to get that reversal, I mean, or, or takedown, I, yeah. I should say. That was weird, because he was down 8 3, so just to. Clarification on the score, but a good job by Angelo overall just to hold off the bonus points there for Purdue. And you saw him roll through. He was fighting tough on Bowman, but Linux was just too tough on top for this match. All right, so here we go at 157. Kendall Coleman, he's ranked eighth in the nation. 23 and 6. 10 and 2 in duels. A redshirt freshman out of South Holland, Illinois. Going up against Mike Van Brill. 16 and 10, 8 and 3 in duels. And Burrell, of course, a great high school wrestler at Clearview. He's done a nice job here at Rutgers. Successful on Friday night against Indiana. Going up against a tough customer here in Coleman. He gets the first two points. Coleman has 74 takedowns. He's definitely active. At least he's got 74 <laughs> takedowns. If you look at the, I mean, these two have never wrestled each other, and obviously Coleman's the favorite here. But if you're looking at the common opponents here, Van Brill, two and five versus common opponents, while Coleman is five and one. So, again, on paper, Coleman has the advantage. But if you're Van Brill, an opportunity to pick up a top 10 guy, you got to take it. And Rutgers now needs the team points down 3 0. You mentioned Coleman very active, and you can see the way he wrestles. He is. Very aggressive here. Two to one is the score. And if you're Van Brill, you're playing defense a lot right now because Coleman's going to be very active. He's going to use his length to try to spring into you, use misdirection. If you're Van Brill, you want to try to keep pushing Coleman back, put him back on his heels. Don't let him push you towards the boundary. Don't let him control the center here. very quickly kind of recoiling back from Coleman. Just to clarify in the previous match, by the way, it looks like it is a official 9-5 it score. It was 9-5, yeah. okay. Yeah, so that was a reversal yeah. at the end for Angelo. As, as, we, as we originally thought, I guess the scoreboard just uh, went a little premature there. But yeah, the official, <laughs> yeah, the official score last match was 9-5. Scoreboard got a little hyperactive there at the end. <laughs> That's the, the home advantage right there in the rack. <laughs> Either way, Purdue is up 3 nothing in the match. Aside from that first takedown, I mean, Van Brill has looked pretty solid so far, controlling the center, not letting Coleman take advantage of him. And defense is there, but, I mean, Van Brill not too active on his feet in terms of his offensive attacks. That's why you see that stall warning right there on Van Brill. See Coleman again trying to coil ahead. Yeah, you don't want to be too careful if you're Van Bros. If you, again, if you sit on your heels, you are going to hit, hit, hit for stalling. You have to be able to re-attack here. He's got, good, he's got good defense right now, sprawling and not letting Coleman 
use those long range shot attempts. But you have to be able to reattack. Coleman in. It's just a one point lead right now. Two to one. Final 15 seconds of period one. You see right there, you see Van Bro backing up a good again, it's good defense with his hands. Able to sprawl back and just hop back, but there's no there's no reattack, so referee's gonna see that eventually later in the match. He's gonna hit Van Bro again with stalling. He already, he already has one, so you're almost I mean kind of wrestling with a little bit of a deficit right there. So Purdue Kendall Coleman will have choice here in the second period. Van Brill on the bottom. Yeah, you, want quick, you want quick explosion here. You don't want to hang on your knees. See Van Brill trying to scoot up his hips. Still on that base and try to tripod up here. Coleman's got the length, so he's going to be able to take advantage of you on top. Van Brill's working. Got to watch this cradle, though. Don't let Coleman lock it up. There you go. Nice move by Van Brill there to get out of that. And now, now you want the credit in the crowd saying Coleman stalling. He just kind of hanging out with your life. But there you go. There's the escape point for Van Brill. And he ties the score, too. Van Brill so far. Hanging very tough here with Kendall Coleman. As you said, he's a top 10 wrestler at 157. Yeah, right now, a candidate for the podium in March. Purdue. Loving their lineup. Here's that springing double leg shot attempt there from Coleman, just from basically from his knees. But he has the length, so he's able to do that against some guys. Inside a minute left in the second period. 2-2 Two -two the score. And Van Brill, I mean, there's nothing flashy right now for him, but the defense has been pretty well, pretty good. But there's that second stall call on Van Brill. But he's not reattacking, so Coleman's going to take this. Take this 3-2 lead here. And again, Van Bro's just kind of giving him points right now. As long as Coleman stays active on his feet and Van Bro's not going to re-attack, I mean, Coleman's going to have the advantage the entire time here. So Coleman up by a point. 3-2. to two. We're inside 30 seconds left in the second period. Opportunities there for Van Brill. Just has to be able to re-attack. They, they do have similar styles in terms of their neutral stances. A lot of these guys will go in the square stance and you know, go down to one knee, check each other out. Now we've got a tight one here at 157. We go to the third and final period, and Kendall Coleman of Purdue has a one-point lead. He's up 3-2. to two. It's going to be very interesting to see what Van Brill does on top here with this ride, if, he, if he's able to contain Coleman. Riding time, not a factor, and, of course, Van Brill can cut the riding time a little bit more. It's only at 34 seconds, but... You know, an escape point for Coleman, and you're down by two. See, we need to take down the tie at this point, and that's just because of the stall call. That's a good job by Van Brill to maintain this ride here. Can't hang on the leg, and I can improve your position here. And Van Brill's going to have that goal of riding out Coleman for this period. He can get a riding time point, but you have to also look for tilts. You've got to be able to get Coleman flat here. Even though he's on his butt. He's got to work his position. The referee's going to call that stalling, but he's working up now. He can extend this ankle, or extend the leg, excuse me, get down to him. Minute 15 left. Van Brill still down by a point, 3 2. You can see the Purdue bench wants the stall warning on, or stall call on Van Brill because they're, they're, they're claiming he's not improving his position. But Van Brill is working that ankle and he's working up the body too. So that's a good ride so far for almost a minute in this period. 103 left in the third, and Coleman hanging on by one, 3 to 2. Looks like the game plan right now for Van Brill is to ride out Coleman for this period and get that riding time point, send it to sudden victory. Unless Van Brook can get him flat, he's really not, not going to have a chance to really turn him. you got to keep doing what you're doing and work on the legs, chop him down, work up the body, keep Coleman flat. Final minute, and there's a point for the escape. Coleman, he goes up by two, four to two. It's a good effort from Van Brill, but we haven't seen much offense from him in neutral, so you, I mean, you need to take down now to tie the match. If it weren't for that stall call, a takedown could win it. 
Van Brill trying to take a shot there, but Coleman able to get away. And with only 35 seconds, Lou, I mean, Col Coleman now can play defense here. He has no stall calls against it, so he can afford at least one here. That's a good shot by Coleman. 25 seconds. And Brill desperately trying to flip Coleman to Coleman instead gets two points. And now he's up six to two. And that should do it for Kendall Coleman inside 10 seconds. And Purdue is going to go up in this match six to nothing. And it was a nice effort from Van Brill, but just no offense for most of that match. And of course, the stall call hurt him, and, and he, had, he had a good ride on Coleman, but, you know, the, the early takedown was the difference right at the top of the match, and, you know, if Coleman can control the center of the mat like that, it's going to be very tough to beat him, so it's a tough loss there for Rutgers, but Purdue rolling early with a 6-0 lead. Van Brill hung in there very tough against a top-10 wrestler, but Kendall Coleman victorious. He goes to 24-6 on the year, and now 11-2 in duels. Now 165. Tanner Webster goes for the Boilermakers, three and seven. I'm gonna put Jackson and Turley out there today. How about that? Jackson Turley gets the nod for the Scarlet Knights at 165. The freshman out of Chester, Virginia, a four-time Virginia State champ in high school. And yeah, Turley weighed in for the first time since the last semester, back on Friday when Rutgers was taking on Indiana. Did not wrestle. They still went with Donner. Donner still seems to be the go-to guy at 165, but they're giving Turley another opportunity. Because he, I mean, Lou, he, he was the guy early on in that quad meet to open up the season as a true freshman. You know, now the red shirt's burnt. You have to give him at least an opportunity here to possibly earn the spot back and you know, give him a chance here to get a, get a win and help out the team score. So Turley, a big opportunity for him. He spins away there as Webster had him in trouble. Come out the back here out of the, out of the, out of the screen. gets that foot... Free. There he goes, too. Oh, he's got his back points, too. Jackson Turley goes up by two. He got two swipes, too. There's two back points. Nice. And two more. He's up 4 nothing, and the crowd erupts here at the rack. That's what you want. That, that, that's a great way to get the crowd back into it. And Turley taking advantage of that scramble position. Once he, get at, once he got out for two, he was able to hold Webster's back exposed to the mat. At the very least, got those two swipes. Now, now, now you have a lead to build on. And if you're working tough on top, got that right leg figure forward. You can go to work. And there's that stall warning. He's building that riding time up as well. Up to 45 seconds now. Well, Turley definitely going to work on top here. Webster not doing anything on bottom at the moment. So that, that's why they have that stall warning. If he can just use that figure four. So it's a little loose now. He's got... As you see Webster trying to tripod up, get back to his base now. But Turley's working, man. He's, he's, just, he's going to many different positions on top right now, just looking for anything. He's got that ball and chain. But Webster's support still on his knees. You, you ideally want that ball and chain with a guy flat. One minute remaining in the first period. Jackson Turley has a 4 nothing lead. He's cranking, man. His riding time is all the way up to a minute 25. What's helping him, too, is that left leg underneath the Webster, so he's got a boot in. He's going to lock around, too. And this is what you want to see. Oh, what a tilt. Look at that. And Turley. That's beautiful. That was pretty. Well, that's, that's four points. And he, if he can hold this tight, I mean, sometimes these guys get lucky pins off these tilts, and Turley's still working for it. Referee's still holding four. And able to spin out was Webster and both. Wrestlers out, the crowd rises to its feet as Turley goes up eight to nothing. Man, that was impressive. I think Jackson Turley's feeling it in his first appearance <laughs> in quite a while. We talk about these young studs on this Rutgers team, the true freshman, the redshirt freshman, and Turley was a highly talented recruit coming in as well. Part of the top five recruiting class for the Scarlet Knights coming into 1920. Turley, you know, an 82-pounder in high school, and he was coming into college at least a, a, as a 74-pounder, but able to get that weight down to 65, and he looks good right now. And that recruiting class ranked fourth best in the nation for Scott Goodell. And the first period comes to an end. 
What an impressive first period for Jackson Turley. Man, he's got the, the opening takedown, and then here's that scramble. You see Webster trying to come out the back, and they watch Turley just hang on his ankle, roll through, kept coming, kept coming. Webster's off balance. Turley gets his head back to the side. Once he gets his foot free right there, boom, two, and then works his way for the back points, and, of course, the later tilt for the extra four. So second period is underway. Turley up 8-0, and his riding time is at 2-16. Yeah, talk about dominating a first period. Nice shot here if he can finish this off this double. Gonna come through, step over. And two more for Turley. I mean, ma I mean, major decision in play a little bit. Turley's thinking about a tech or even a pin. Here's more near fall. He's got a shot. He's got to settle back a little bit for that pin. He's cranking on the hay. So the referee's holding four, but if he can reset here, might be able to get him flat. Oh, there's, oh, there's a pin. Jackson Turley with the pin in the second period in the Rutgers Athletic Center explodes. Welcome back, Jackson Turley. How about that for the young buck? Turley with a huge fall. There's just cranked on that head right there and boom, referee slaps the mat. And we were thinking tech fall for Turley, but he said, let me tie up this match real quick. Three minutes and 45 seconds in. He gets the pin to tie the match at six. All smiles for the most part on the Rutgers bench. I think uh, Coach Goodell's ready for the next match, right? But you see, <laughs> just the coach Tyler grabbed him. He's, he's really happy about that one. What a performance from Turley. Scott Goodell in his 13th season. Got his 180th win on Friday night against Indiana. Man, that'll get the crowd back into it and see what uh, all of Eric can do. As a, you know, obviously Rutgers without Joe Grillo, Lou, but so they're going to be bouncing around between Scott and Oliveira, but they're going to give Oliveira a shot here against the high ranked Dylan Lighty. Anthony Oliveri, 6 and 0, oh, Hanover Park High School. Of course, transfer from Hofstra. He's got a tough assignment here. Fourth ranked wrestler in the nation at 174, Dylan Lighty, who's 23 and 1, 11 and 1 in duels, 7 and 1 versus ranked opponents. A two-time NCAA qualifier has over 100 career wins. The redshirt senior out of Indianapolis. Rutgers has tied the score in the match 6-6 by virtue of the huge pin by Jackson Turley. You want to talk about getting the crab back into it, especially at a, in one of these dual meets where you're not starting traditionally at 125, and now you're in the fourth match of the day, and... And he thought, you know, the crowd taking out of it a little bit after the first two matches where Purdue takes the first two. And, you know, obviously in the match at 149, Rutgers, I mean, it could have went the other way, but that's just, just a beautiful way to, you know, swing the momentum around a little bit. It gets the team back into it, gets them brought up. And usually when you get a pin like that, Lou, it can really energize the rest of the lineup. Very tough here early on with Lighty. Mighty potential national champion this year at 174. I think a guy uh, over at Penn State may have named uh, Mr. Mark Hall. Yeah. <laughs> Something to say about that. Well, that's for sure. But Lighty could certainly. Out, hey, outside shot to get to the finals. Yeah, that's for sure. He's the real deal, Dylan Lighty. He's not, he's not ranked fourth for no reason. Ranked fourth. And she's lost only once this year. Final minute. I mean, on paper, and usually in these situations, if you're Rutgers, you want to be able to, you know, you have, you have your backup going against the top five guy. This is where you want to save bonus points. And Oliveri hanging tough in right now, but you got to watch out for these underhooks from Lighty. And a good job by Oliveri just to avoid a potential throw. Neither, neither wrestler has scored yet. 35 seconds left of the first. Wow, how about that? <laughs> Oliveri with an ole move there as Lighty tried to get charging go goal for the shot. <laughs> Oliveri's okay. got good defense, and it's a little similar to Van Brill's match the few moments ago back at 157. If you're Oliveri, you don't want to just keep playing defense the entire time. You want to be able to be a little aggressive here and attack on offense as well. And tight whizzer here. It's late in, the, late in the period. Don't give up two yet. Got to keep fighting along the boundary. Both wrestlers out. That was a good job by Oliveri. Good mat awareness, grabbed around the head, and now only six seconds left. 
See if he can hang out for a 0-0 period. Interesting to see if someone could step up at this 174-pound bracket. Rutgers has wrestled Willie Scott this season there, Anthony Oliveri now. Yeah, you don't know how long Joe Grell is going to be out for with that knee injury. And if he's out for a couple weeks and you need both these guys to step up, and obviously Willie Scott, one of the two losses for Rutgers on Friday night. See what Oliveri can do. And he's bounced around weight classes from 165 and 174 as well. So he's, been, he's, one, he's one of those guys that you know, pr provides depth for you, can step in on a, mo on a moment's notice. Lighty picks up a point on the escape. So he goes up 1-0, minute 40 left in the second. It's our fourth bout of the afternoon. As we're going a little bit out of order today, of course, starting at 149, but the halfway point is going to be after Billy Janzer at 184 for Rutgers. And, and now you're tied at six after the pin from Turley. I mean, this would be a good opportunity for Rutgers to, you know, obviously, obviously, if you get an upset here, that's monumental, but you hold, you hold Purdue to no bonus points in this match and get a win at 184. You're, you're, you're sitting pretty headed into, the, headed into the intermission as Rutgers obviously the underdog here. There's that stall one on Oliveri again. Like I said, Lou, similar to Mike Van Brill's match here. Oliveri, good defense against Lighty in neutral, but with very little reattacks and offense right here. The referee is gonna is gonna call that pretty much every time. If you're, if you're just backing up, playing defense, and you're not really reattacking and being aggressive, you are gonna get, you are gonna get hit for that stall warning. 40 seconds left. You can see Lighty trying to take a shot there, and he gets two. They take down. He's up three nothing. If you're all very, you want to attack the hands here. You're on your base right now. Try to tripod up or at least get one leg up. Start standing up. Try to get an escape point for the end of the period. In a short time. And both wrestlers out of the circle with seven seconds left in the second. You need a quick stand up here, but all very is going to go down to start the third, I would think. Try to get a point back. So a point here would be huge. He's got time. He's even cut away. And he just couldn't get away, and the period comes to an end. Good attempt there, but yeah, you see Alvarez can go right down once again to start the third. If he gets out here, there's that takedown from Light. He just kept working there that time. Solid defense, but Oliveri not going to stop him all the time, of course. Well, you know, I mean, look, I mean, you look at the riding time, it's not a factor right now. Still under 30 seconds for Lighty. Quick escape for Oliveri. All of a sudden, you just need to take them to tie the match. Third period underway. Oliveri on bottom trying to get loose and get on the board here. Hanging on. So the crowd getting anxious. They want a stall warning on Lighty. It's kind of just riding parallel right now. He's just going to cut him loose. And he does get away, then takes a quick shot. Yeah, those guys like to play around with that. It's, like, it's, it's almost like going to a freestyle star or, or, or optional star when you're in referee's position when you go top and bottom. You kind of just keep your hands on the guy and just wait for him to just turn around real quick. <laughs> Give all the very credit. He was ready for it, but this time, Lighty gets him down. You got to be careful now. He's going he's to start going take down, let him up. It's 5-2. to two. Don't forget, Oliveri has that. Got that stall warning. They're going to get a Wow. They're going to give Oliveri a stall for that. Oh, boy. I mean, Lighty just kind of flattened him over, and Oliveri was fighting, and there was action. And again, it's a questionable stall call right there on the boundary. And that, that's a big point for Lighty, though, up by four. He's got the riding time at the moment. And two more for Lighty. He's up eight to two now in control. And he also has the riding time. 
And yeah, Purdue wants the bonus points. It's essentially a six-point lead. Can't give up another takedown here, but you, got, you have the stall calls if you're all very. You got to keep, keep fighting hard here. And there's two more, 10 to 3. If you're lighter, you're going to try to ride them out the rest of the way. So if you're all very, if you get an escape point, you can prevent bonus points. Only 12 seconds left. And Dylan Lighty with another impressive victory as he wins it 11 to 3. He goes to 24 and 1 on the year and continues his outstanding wrestling, preserving that top five ranking. Yeah, I mean, that, that, that was just a great flurry there from Lighty right at the end of the match. I mean, he's very close the entire time, but just able to explode and get that major decision. That, 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 that could be a huge point for Purdue, getting that extra one. Instead of, instead of being up 9-6, you're up 10-6. And now if you're Billy Janzer for Rutgers, you have, no, you have no slouch here. Max Lyon, a former NCAA qualifier. Max Lyon, 15-8 on the year junior out of Dillersville, Iowa at 184. Going up against Janzer, ranked 22nd in the nation. Billy Janzer, 15-5, and 10-1 and in duels. Friday night, tough decision over Jake Hines. Hines gave him all he could handle, but Janzer hung on for the victory. Yeah, you like to see those types of victories, even if they're against guys that you, on paper, should beat. But good for Janzer to win late and give you a confidence boost moving forward. And, you know, pressure's on a little bit for Janzer. He's favored in this match, just based on the rankings. But down 10-6 if you're Rutgers. You almost want to see if Janzer can... Get a major himself and tie things up at 10 before we head to the intermission. Of course, a lot of anticipation with Jake and Billy Janzer in his Rutgers career. Highly recruited, number two high school recruit, 18 at 184. Two-time New Jersey State champ down at Delsey. Slowly becoming a fan favorite here at the rack for his aggressiveness and bullish mentality. Love to smack the head around, goes to the overhooks, underhooks, and those inside trips and go those trips to the single legs. He's just, he's just great with the upper body stuff. He's really developed quite a quite a bit since his red shirt year last year. Now he's on full display. Of the body. Oh, beautiful ankle pick! Oh, he didn't finish it. My goodness, that's a great job by Lyon to kind of get back in front of Janzer. That was beautifully set up. Just gotta be able to finish that. That was that was too pretty not to be finished. Minute 20 left to the first. No score. Janzer and Lyon. Good sprawl there from Janzer. Got that front headlock. See if he can work it now. Lyon trying to take a shot there. Janzer able to get back up to his feet. Janzer's re-attacking really well so far. Lyon just has that good upper body defense at the moment. But you see Janzer with those front headlocks, and even if Lyon stands up, you just see the, the slide buys there for Janzer. Trying to get to those low leg singles, ankle picks, knee picks. A lot of options for you. Approaching the final 30 seconds of period one. No score here between these two wrestlers at 184. Janzer definitely being aggressive and Lyon not taking too many shots, but not going to be enough for the referees to hit a hit line with stalling. And period one comes to an end, and we are scoreless. Angel will choose to go bottom here to start the second, try to get a quick escape point. I would say overall a good, uh, I would say a, a good first pair for Janzer overall. I and mean, that was a nice angle pick. I mean, it, it's unbelievable to me how he just didn't finish that. You can see, oh my goodness, the reaction from Coach Cadell. That was the same exact reaction we had up, we had up here in the booth. I mean, that, that's just beautifully done, set up well. And Lyon on his butt, nearly his back, and I don't know how Lyon was able to scoot his hips away from that and avoid that takedown. That's probably more, that was probably more impressive from Lyon to avoid that takedown. Well, Janzer gets the first point of the match. He's able to escape. He's up one nothing. Oh, 
James are definitely controlling the center of the mat here. Crowd getting a little annoyed. No stall warnings on Lion. Yeah, Jans are very aggressive. He's, just, he's dominating the center of the mat right now. He's keeping Lion on his, on his heels. See that half shot from Lion just to show the referee that he's working a little bit. Final minute of the second. It's just a one-point differential here in favor of Janzer. Trying to get the Scarlet Knights back in the match. They're down 10 to 6. There's that underhook attempt there from Janzer. And again, just no, no re-attacks there from Lion, and that's why the crowd's getting a little frustrated. 30 seconds left. For Jansen, you would love a takedown before the third period. Give yourself a li little bit of a cushion. The line's kind of the same way. He's going to attack the upper body, go overhooks and underhooks. See if Jansen can work something out of that tie up. Final 10 seconds. It appears we're going to go into the third period. With just a one point difference, Jans are up one to nothing. And he's definitely working, but the Lion knows he has to go down, try to get out for one and tie the match. Ryan time, of course, not a factor, so let's see if Janzer can get a tough ride here, at least a minute. And then you have, then you have Lion at about eight seconds of riding time from that previous period, so Janzer will need at least 109 here and give himself that advantage. Lion trying to tie it up with an escape, and he does. Well, now if you're Janzer, just keep maintain your aggressiveness, and you know, if, you keep, if you keep doing it, the referee might eventually call a stall warning. It's Lion trying to take a shot there, and Janzer gets away. Yeah, good job by Janzer to scoot out of that one. And at 35 left, we're tied at one here at 184 pounds. Like I said, though, I know Lyon's not ranked, but he is 15 and 8 on the year, and he has qualified for NCAAs in the past, and again, just, he's no slouch. It seems like either both wrestlers are just one, one extra go away from a huge takedown that, that could essentially clinch this match. You see both branches getting very antsy. It's a match that's basically Rutgers needs here down by four overall. One minute remaining third Final minute of the third. You're right, Lou. This is a match the Scarlet Knights de desperately need. Need this win going into the intermission. You've already lost, the you've already lost three of four bouts. If you win your second one here and you know, cut it to a 10-9 deficit at halftime, you'll be looking good headed into the second half. Crowd trying to cheer on Billy Janzer. Lyon takes the shot. Janzer tries to reattack, but it's only 30 seconds left. Now Janzer trying again for a takedown. Good. But That's a good job by Janzer to get his back towards the center after Lyon's reattack attempt. Final 20 seconds. We'll be looking at our first overtime match of the afternoon. You know, tense environment right now. Janzer's working. Lyon's not circling back towards the center. Janzer trying to get a last second two. But he will not he go to OT. Foo boy. So we're tied at one. One minute up on the clock. There's the overtime rules. Sudden victory. Two. 30 second period you see. One minute here though. And any point from for either wrestler can win the match here. You don't want to end it on a penalty point, but basically it's first takedown wins, essentially. Good shot from Janzer. He's shooting a little bit from distance, but it's just good sprawling from Lyon for the most part. 30 seconds left in OT. Good re-attack here from Janzer if he can grab that ankle. Janzer desperately. Oh, he's got an he's ankle. Got he's got to be able to finish. He's got the head right now. Again, I don't know, I mean, I don't know how, I mean, Lions defense is unbelievable right now. I don't know how he's able to stand up after that. Ankle pick. 
and he got it. Janzer gets the takedown and wins in overtime. That's huge. Billy Janzer grinded it out, cuts it to a 10-9 lead at intermission. That's back-to-back -back grinded out wins for Billy Janzer. The hammer keeps it going. And Scott Goodell leaped into the air. Take what a, a win for Billy Janzer. Take a look at that again. Another ankle pick. That time, he was not going to be denied. Switch off to the second leg in. Nice little slide <laughs> nod there from the redshirt freshman. Got to love it. Looked at his coach, gave him a nod. <laughs> he said, that's the way. So a huge win for Janzer as he gets Rutgers right back in it. We've hit intermission here at the Rutgers Athletic Center. Man, we've got a good one here today on this Sunday afternoon. 10th ranked Purdue leading Rutgers 10 to 9. And the second half of today's match upcoming here on BTN Plus. Back at the rack, Rutgers trailing Purdue 10 to 9. Two big moments in the first half of today's match. Starting with Jackson Turley coming up with a big pin. Making his return in spectacular fashion with that pin. It, I, I, that's just a great match for the true freshman. And he got Rutgers back into the match, tied, up, uh, tied things up at six. And then it was Billy Janzer coming up big in overtime. 1-1 one, one the entire time, not too much action. I mean, a lot of action from Janzer just couldn't break through with that last takedown until the end. Finally got the ankle pick and it clinched a huge win head into the intermission for Rutgers. So we start the second half at 197, and this is one of the marquee matchups of the afternoon. Jordan Pagano ranked 18th in the nation for the Scarlet Knights, 17 and six, going up against fifth ranked Christian Bruner, who's 22 and four. Seven pins on the year for Bruner, 95 career wins, a three-time NCAA qualifier, senior out of East Dundee, Illinois. And Pagano, of course, the graduate student out of Bergen Catholic and Penn State transferring to Rutgers. This is a, uh, a key matchup here for both teams. It, 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 I mean, at this point, Lou, with uh, five bouts to go, every match is going to be tight. I would say the winner of this match is going to have to take at least three, three bouts. If we're not going to include bonus points. And here's an opportunity for Pagano to knock off a high ranked opponent. And Bruner's a All American caliber type of wrestler. And he's a three time qualifier, too. Yeah, they'll restart here. Bruner participated in the U23 World Championships. He is, as Nick mentioned, Top flight wrestler, ranked in the top five in the nation. What's interesting, too, if you look at their common opponents between, between these two guys, Pagano's actually four and three against common opponents, while Bruner's four and six. So, again, maybe a slight edge to Pagano in that area. We expect this one to be tight, despite the disparity in the rankings right now. Rutgers still has three ranked wrestlers to go here tonight. Pagano, Aguilar. And Sammy Alvarez and Purdue with Bruner here. Devin Schroeder will go at 125, ranked in the top 10. Yeah, I know in our open we previewed the marquee matchups of the of the afternoon. Obviously, Pagano and Bruner, one of them. Once you get to 125 between Aguilar and Schroeder, that's going to be another big one. That you see Purdue favored on paper in those two. So if if, if, it, if it go if it go if it goes that way, Lou, then if you're Rutgers, you have to win the other three. You have to get probably get bonus points out of Alvarez at 133. Get a win from Aragona at 141, and you know, Matt Carenti bumping, bumping up to heavyweight again today. He would need to knock off number 25, Thomas Panola. Forty seconds left in the first. Good defense there from Pagano. Nice sprawl. Got to be careful though. Bruno can throw. We need Pagano to get back towards the center, avoid the stall. Oh, both Showed wrestlers him. go down. He showed some action. Hopefully Pagano's all right. Looks like, looks like the head did not hit the side. He's from our vantage point. He's fine. <laughs> <laughs> He's right in front of the press table over there on the far side. 20 seconds left. 20 seconds. And no score between Christian Bruner and Jordan Pagano. Not too much offensive action aside from that last shot from Bruner, which obviously resulted in Pagano Wizarding hard with his arm and taking Bruno out of bounds. You got to scramble here. He's got to try to grab his ankles. Pagano does. 
Can't let go of it. Brewer can get the two here. And the clock saves Brewer. Pagano there. Yeah, definitely saved by the buzzer right there. Bruno was in a good position coming out the back, and unless Pagano was able, unless Pagano was able to take up that ankle and go in and roll roll around in a scramble, he was probably gonna get the two there. So saved by the buzzer. And once again, the, de the defense on display for the Rutgers wrestlers today just need a little bit more offense after defending off these shots. So we go to period two, no score. Here at 197. Good Matt return there from Bruno. Switch time here for Pagano. Pagano scrambling, trying to get away. Now both wrestlers are out. Pagano's working to get out for sure. Not, he's, not, he's not just staying on the bottom there. He saw going for that stand up and then saw an opportunity for a switch, and Bruno did, it. Bruno did a nice job defending that off and not giving up the reversal. Trying to put a lot of weight on the upper body of Pagano there. Sorry, neck a minute and a half remaining here in this second period. Here's where you don't want to be if you're Pagano. Bruner gets those legs underneath and starts to flatten you out. Bruner's good on top. That's why it's imperative for Pagano to get out from bottom. So he's going to work up that riding time. It's almost at a minute now. That could be huge in a scoreless match. And you can see the Rutgers bench wants that stalemate call. And now the rest are really improving the position. Remaining in the second, neither wrestler has been able to register a point. Bruner, though, has the riding time up to a minute 15. He's deadly on top. He's got that left leg underneath. Clamp it down on Pagano's right leg as well. Pagano can get away from this period without giving up any points. That'd be big, but you want to get, you want to at least try to get out for one. There's that stalemate call after quite a while, I would say. So the stalemate call helps Pagano there, obviously. And then he'll be on bottom. Bruno doesn't score any points on top here. He can at least rest on the fact that he's built up over a minute of riding time. And see if Pagano can roll through. Might be a reversal. Good job by Bruner. Stay with him, though. 15 seconds left, the second. Crowd wanted locking hands there. I don't think uh, Coach Goodell's going to challenge that. It was too quick there and probably probably not quite locking hands and didn't really see it from, a, from our vantage point as well. <laughs> you see some people, people in the crowd still want that locking hands call. And there is the end of the second period. Still no score between these two top 20 wrestlers. Jordan Pagano ranked 18th and Christian Bruner ranked 5th. Yeah, unfortunately for Pagano, maybe scoreless, but if you if you can ride Bruno, it would be big, but the two minutes of riding time, he essentially has a one-up lead, so an escape point will give him a two-point lead, essentially. So if you're Pagano, try to cut that underneath a minute, but Bruner's one of these tough guys in 97, just tough to keep down and tough to get out from as well. Pagano has the right idea, trying to throw that leg in, but Bruner had to stand right up. Pagano just going to cut him away after getting hit for, for a stall warning. The first point. Well, good shot for Pagano. If he can finish, he's going to try to drag him in now. And legs high. If he can drag him in, they go for the trip here. Pagano desperately trying to pull Bruner back in. He almost hit Bruner for stalling for trying to back out. And there's the takedown. Oh, oh, he's out of bounds. The referee says he's out. And here comes the brick. Oh, Scott Goodell flips the brick in immediately. Bruner's hurt too. That looked bad for Bruner. I'm going to see the replay. There's the trip in. Oh, I think it looks like the knee got torqued from Bruner, and he's in, oh, he's in pain. I mean, I mean, if you're Purdue, you just got to hope that Bruner's okay and they can finish this match, but he seems to be in a lot of pain. I, was, I mean, just going back to the takedown initially, that was, or the attempt at a takedown for Pagano, it was a great job by him to keep Bruner in the circle and go for that trip. He had the idea. It was it was close. It looked like when they finished it, he was out of bounds. But that was a little. I mean, that's kind of scary there for Bruner. You see, there's the trip and oh, I mean that's really close. It's all going to depend on when they rule that two. 
if Pagano's foot, even if it wasn't touching the mat in the boundary, if it's in the air over the over the line, it should be in. But they're checking on Bruner's knee. I mean, that blew. I mean, he's in so much pain right now. I don't know if he's gonna be able to finish this match. And they are checking, of course, on the challenge. Yeah, Goodell did challenge it, so they are going to take a look at it, whether the Bruno finishes or not. There's the foot. Oh, that's. I mean, that is so close, and he, you can see even yeah, Coach Pritzoff wanted counts, uh, wanted the near fall points for a count, but they were out of bounds at that point. But I don't know. It, it is close. It, it, it's going to be tough to judge on that angle. Again, even if Pagano's foot is not touching the mat in in bounds. If it's over the line in bounds in the air, that is still in bounds because the body part is in bounds, but. I don't know. I mean, I think the injury time might have run out there for Bruner. So if he can't continue, they might have to injury default this match anyway. And that would be sick. I mean, for Rutgers in that sense, it'd be good just because it'd be a six points for the team score. But you just hate to see Bruner get hurt like that. They're checking on his knee, and again, it, 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 just, it just looked nasty when he went down. Yeah, Bruner, tremendous wrestler, and Pagano he, comes over. And I think they're done now. He's got the injury default out of this match. Yeah, Pagano comes over and shakes the hand of Bruner. You know, obviously, Pagano doesn't want to see that. He'll take the victory in the injury default. Rutgers goes up 15 to 10, but that's not what Pagano wanted. Not the way Pagano wanted to win it there. And he yeah, comes he, over again to yeah. talk to Bruner. It's definitely not. I mean, no matter who you are, you never want to win by injury default. I mean, it's good for your teams. You get the, you get the six points, but you just hate to see that from from from, from either side. I guess I've seen a guy get hurt like that, especially a talented guy like Bruner who's – we mentioned before the match start, Louis. He's an All-American candidate this year at 197 for the Boilermakers, and it just looked like a nasty knee injury. And it looked like the ankle got twisted, and then the knee, the knee kind of torqued a little bit too. It just you, you just you just hate to see that if you're if you're a Purdue fan, if you're just a wrestling, wrestling fan in general. He's still getting tended to down there. He's, you know, man, you just, just got to hope he's able to get up and you know they can work on him off the mat. Yeah, as we said, Christian Bruner approaching 100 career wins and he cannot obviously put any pressure on that leg and the crowd here at the Rutgers yeah, yeah, Athletic yeah, yeah. Center That's very respectfully cla rises very classic judgment the Rutgers fans and again Bruner's one of the better wrestlers at 197 and you really hope that's not a season ending yeah, that's, injury that, that, that's tough on Purdue and it, you know that, that's tough on Purdue individually and as a team if he's not going to be able to continue for a while. So Rutgers takes the lead, 15 to 10, as they get the six points. And now we go to the heavyweight match. And Matt Carrenti goes for the Scarlet Knights, the redshirt junior, 11 and four on the year, had a huge victory against Indiana, exclamation point victory on Friday night. Penny yeah, got the Jake pin. Clamola. And he goes up against 25th ranked Thomas Panola, who's 17 and 9, redshirt freshman out of Zionsville, Indiana. Last year was Purdue's outstanding freshman. And Panola making some a little bit of noise early on in the season, you know, cracking the top 25 for Flow's for Flow Wrestling's rankings at heavyweight. And Carrenti right now just filling in for the injured Christian Colucci. Still unsure of uh, his return for the Straw Knights, and we've seen Rutgers roll with. Alex Esposito, the backup heavyweight, but you see now Friday and today, Carrenti had the staff having him bump back up and gain a little bit of weight, move that, make that move back to heavyweight. We saw Carrenti as a true freshman in 97 a couple years ago, qualified for NCAAs and took that red shirt year. As they, the original plan was to try to get him to heavyweight, and he got about to about you know, 220, 225, even up towards a 230. Just, but it, you know, it, was hit, it was hit and miss, Lou, when they were originally trying to make him a heavyweight, but now... And moving him back down to 97 last year. Didn't qualify for NCAAs. And it was up and down last year, but now this year. You know, again, Pagano now at the 97-pounder. And it's like, what do you do with Carrenti? He's a solid wrestler, former qualifier for you. And, and he let him sit on the bench or he tried to move him back up. And I guess a late season push to move him back up. If options moving forward, and it could be an indication of Kalushi's health, honestly. If if Carrenti's gonna be the guy moving forward, you know, waited about again 210 again today, like he did on Friday. So we'll see if he can sell and make that climb back up to a solid heavyweight. Certainly has the length for it. A minute. Five remaining in the first period here. Heavyweight match. Carrenti definitely working the upper body stuff. Being a little bit more aggressive to start this match. And 
With that stall warning on Panola. Good shot here from Correnti. He finished this single. Still has 40 seconds to work with here. He can drag it in a little. Keep that foot in bounds. And now both wrestlers out. So they'll restart neutral. One thing you got to say about Correnti making the move back up to heavyweight, Lou. Because obviously you know, the, the max of weight is 285 and he was originally 97 pounder. He's still only about 210, but now you have your Correnti. And this is going to be a permanent move for the Scarlet Knights staff and Correnti for the rest of the season. I mean, you have room to grow now. At this point, you can you can, you can lift more just, and you build, build for strength. Because Correnti obviously has the, uh, the agility and the length that would make a good heavyweight. But now, now at this point, you don't have to worry about cutting weight. You can put on some solid muscle mass for the rest, for the rest of the year, maybe get up to about 215 at some point. If you're lucky, 220 uh, as a, you know, another solid 10 pounds on you. And you know, currently looking good so far in that first period. He'll defer. Let's see if he can ride Panola in the second. But again, just, it, there's, a lot, there's a lot of good things that, about Correnti that this year just looks a little bit, look, looks fresher this year than, than he did last year. And, you know, I'd say as a 97 pounder for Correnti, he's probably walking around probably roughly around 205, 210 anyway before he makes that cut. And a Holy Cross High School 2016 state champion in New Jersey. And don't forget, Lou, he won that state championship at 220 pounds in high school. Yeah, so, to your point, he'd be very comfortable at that weight. He's certainly comfortable walking around at 210 and not worrying about cutting the 97. And, if he, and again, if he's going to be the heavyweight moving forward, and you have some room to grow. And you know, he's, he's, he has experience, and this is a good ride so far. Again, Panola back down to his knees. I mean, he has the experience from a couple years ago being a red shirt and wrestling at heavyweight in a couple of tournaments. He's, he's looked pretty good. He was weighing about, I think, I think around 230, 235 that year. Well, I did a good job to keep that toe in there for quite some time. He was able to build up the riding time somewhat. He's got it up near 40 seconds. 11-4 on the year, Corinthi is, and get a win today over a top 25 guy. It's a resume builder. And it gives you confidence moving forward. Of course, you had, you had, the, uh, you had the pin on Friday against Indiana and get a win here. And all of a sudden, you're saying to yourself, hey, maybe Corinthi's our go-to guy at heavyweight for the rest of the year, if, especially if Colucci can't come back. Good job of Corinthi. Chop that arm, get Panola flat. Working close to a minute of riding time now. He's doing, he's doing a good job, Lou, keeping that weight forward and putting Panola back to his knees and keeping that foot in bounce and using up the clock. And both wrestlers out. He would not allow Panola to get away. I think Coach Goodell is trying to make the case that Panola is just running for the boundary, trying to get a restart. But it is over. It's, it's, it's at a, the riding time's at a minute now for Correnti. Don't forget, Panola does have a stall warning against him right now, so Correnti can afford to keep riding tough. Try to throw that half in on the left side. If you get him flat, it's going to be big. 50 seconds left in the second period. Another good map return for Correnti. Just the length is there. No, he just keeps following him. And I know Panola cut away there, but that's a great job by Correnti in this second period to work on top. So Panola has a 1-0 lead. 30 seconds left in the period. Tried to throw by a Tampa Panola on one knee there that Correnti did. It's not enough momentum to lunge forward and get behind. And period two comes to a close. This is big for Correnti right here, Lubas. He does have over a minute of riding time, but it's only at 114, so you need a fast escape from Correnti to tie up the match, and then you'll still have that riding time advantage if it stays over a minute, so essentially a 2-1 lead, and then you can go to work in neutral where he has been the more aggressive wrestler. Good roll through. Maybe a reversal here. Right, keep going. And Correnti gets out. He ties the score at one. Riding time at 106, too. So he has technically has the lead if he can keep working. Oh, nice! 
No. Oh, they, oh, wow, they waved it off. Was, yeah, you see Panola's left arm in that wizard position. If Corrente can just limp arm out, he's going to try to take a leg now from underneath. If he can come through, he can finish this takedown. He's going to shelf that leg. Trying to hook around. There it is. Whoop. There it is. And there's the two for Corrente. He takes a 3-1 lead. And actually what hurt Panola right there, he kept that hand in bounds. If that hand was out of bounds, both of they, they would have ruled that takedown off, and Panola actually keeping his hand in bounds kind of backfired. I mean, now you, now you see Purdue Bench trying to argue that call. And Panola came up with a point there. He escaped, so he's down three to two. Here's a takedown again. See, Panola's hand is still in bounds, so that is two. I'm not sure what head coach Tony, Tony Ursland's arguing for Purdue. I think Panola did. I mean, it looked like Panola did get out for one there, so it should stay yeah. three to two. But I'm not sure, again, I'm not sure what Coach Ursland's arguing for, for the Purdue bench. Because again, if you notice, Panola's right arm stayed, or right hand stayed in bounds, and Corrente kept working for that takedown. And as long as there's a body part in, Lou, <laughs> the match is going to keep going. So we will take a look at it with a minute 12. Here's the, here it is again. That, so that was not two. That's where Panola had hit that wizard right there to prevent the two-point takedown. And you see Crenna keep working here. Takes that leg. He's going to try to shelf it now. But what, you have to watch that right hand of Panola. Watch. So now they're out. They're out they're, so they're still in. They're still in. Once they come through, look. They're still in bounds right here. Boom. Hand still in. I mean, to me, that, that, I mean, that, that's as clear as day. That, that, that is a takedown for Crenna. He, he had the arms around both legs, and Panola was seated. I don't think there was any type of scramble position. So, to me, that's still a takedown for Corrente. Unless, I, unless I'm missing something from up here. <laughs> well, it is three to 3-2 in favor of Matt Corrente at the moment. And the clock stopped with a minute 12 remaining in the third. Now, keep in mind, Corrente still has a minute 12 of riding time up on the clock as another, well. There's another angle to see it made clear. The referee calls that a clear two-point takedown, and Panola's right hand was still in bounds. I mean, you could pin guys out of bounds as long as you have one foot in. <laughs> so that, to me, it's a takedown. I mean, I, I mean, but again, it does worry me a little bit, Lou. They're, they're, they're taking a long look at this. I see Christian Colucci on the bench back there. Transfer out of Lehigh for Rutgers. Still Started heavyweight last year. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's taking a long it review. Seems pretty clear to us, but unless my eyes deceive me, I did not see both guys fully out of bounds. Unless they're challenged. Unless Ursuline thinks they're at, they're in bounds, but they're just challenging the initial call of a takedown, which was close. But look at Corinthi had had his arms wrapped around the waist, and you see Goodell. Putting a, putting a thumbs up. And the call has been confirmed. Yeah, take that for Corrente here. Yeah. So Corrente does have the lead. I think they're trying to determine now if Panola actually did get an escape point. That's what I think it's what Coach Goodell is trying to confirm. The takedown's confirmed, so at minimum, Corrente he still has the lead, but. Corrente, see, is he Corrente trying to pump up, pump up the crowd while we're still waiting in the delay? Looks like we are, we are going to go neutral, so looks like Panola did officially earn that escape point as well. So it is three to two. Good defense there from Corinthians. So Panola trying to go for that low leg single to try to get an ankle pick as well. And there is 50 seconds left here. And don't forget, Panola has that stall warning. That's why he's being overly aggressive right now. Crane's got to be careful. Don't give up two here. He's going to turn back into him. Nice job. Okay, Crane almost kind of gave him his leg there. He's got to whistle down hard now. Panola not going to let this go easily. And both wrestlers are out. Well, that's going to be a stall warning on Corinthi. He kind of just jumped over the boundary. He gets shoved into the seats, though. And he's all right, but the crowd didn't like that from Panola. 37.4 seconds remaining. Corrente has a 3-2 lead. He does have a minute 12 of riding time. And Panola just like, shot out of a cannon compared to that first period. Well, Panola knows he's got to do something here. Desperate to get a takedown. 20, 20 seconds left in the match. Corrente trying to hang on for the victory. 15 seconds left. 
Got riding time two. It's locked now. Ten seconds. So he's got another point for the riding time, so he's up essentially four to two. Be careful. And there's a takedown. But this right, yeah, I mean, has got but, the but, riding yeah, time. Yeah, Panola's celebrating, but Corretti's got the riding time, so it yeah. should be four four. It's four four. Should be four to four. Oh boy, I mean that's huge from Panola. I think he prematurely celebrated. Now, I mean, now we have more confusion. I don't know why. I mean, you see, Coach Cadell's he's visually frustrated. And there's the takedown. I don't know if Corrente is shaking up. He's really getting up slowly. Yeah, he was. I mean, you saw Panola's shoulder was driven into his rib area, so he's definitely I maybe mean, he got the air knocked out of him a little bit. Now, I, mean, I, I think now what they're looking at is, I mean, Corinthians back was exposed right there. I, think, I mean, but you, but you saw no swipes from the referee in terms of near fall points. But if Panola gets those near fall points, I mean, that's going to be a big comeback victory there for Panola and just a, a match that Corinthians just, he had won. And there's the takedown. Corinthians looking at the clock. Panola's, I mean, Panola's dry, there's one, oh. two, oh, there's two swipes right there, but I don't know if the buzzer sounded. There was two swipes right at the end. They, I, so they're, they're, they're going to look at if Panola got the two near fall before the buzzer sounded. If he did, he's going to win six to four. Because it should be four, four right now because of the riding time. So there's a takedown. There's two. I mean, you know what, I mean, the referee starts swiping one. Ooh, that's so close to see the... You see the mat. You see the uh, the timekeeper on the side there. Wave his arms at the buzzer sounded. So if we can, if, if we slow that down, you might have a better determination if that referee got that second swipe off before the buzzer sounded. That time, that time here, that timekeeper comes to the side. And he yells time to alert the official. Again, it's four four because of the riding time for Carrenti. So we are either gonna have sudden victory, or it's gonna be a six four win for Panola. So right here, we have a takedown, right? Once referee says signals two. There's two points for Panola. It's 4-3 four, it's four, Panola. So now watch. Referee's going to start counting right near the end of the buzzer. Timekeeper on the bottom here. There's one. Time right before that second swipe. This is going to be really close. And then the, crowd, the crowd likes on the side. I think we're going to go overtime. Great. Great, great job by replay yeah, review. Great replay by our... Our crew, great job by our crew on that replay. Razor thin margins, Lou. I mean, if, I mean obviously, if you're the Rutgers bench, you're Corrente, I mean, you had that match won. You didn't want to give it up there. I mean, you, you shouldn't even be in this position anyway, but now Panola's going to come out like a, you know, on fire now. So here we go, OT. We're tied at four. And Panola really aggressive to start this overtime period. Right, he's got a wizard hard. Panola's going to come in. I keep wizarding if you're Carrenti. Know where you are, too. Don't let them limp arm out. They're out. You see, <laughs> Tony, I mean, Tony Ursland wants a fleeing the mat, which would be a stall warning or stall call. That'd be the second one on Carrenti. And that'd be a point, but they're going to go neutral here. So no stall on Carrenti. 40.4. Both wrestlers have stalls on him, but Panola obviously not stalling now. He's being aggressive. Yeah, Panola can feel it. Here. He's really going for it here in overtime. It's a big swing bat here for the match. If Rutgers gets this one, they're going to be up by eight with four matches to go. Or should be three matches to go. Oh, Panola's got the leg here. And that's it. So Panola, the Corinthi gets up, didn't like that takedown, but Panola wins it. Yeah, he didn't like the extracurriculars there for Panola, but. That's a, that's, a, that's a rough loss for Matt Carrenti as Panola. That's a huge win for Purdue, though. Cut the lead back down to 15 to 13. Instead of them being down by eight, you're only down by two. And for Carrenti, I mean, you're, you're, up, you're up three to one after that late takedown. Here's the winning takedown again for Panola. Just isolate that single leg and just drove him to the mat and a little extra shove there. And, you know, Carrenti, Carrenti's not going to be a big fan of that. And you saw the reaction by head coach Tony Ursland. Extremely pleased with that effort by Panola. Panola really showed us something there. As he came from behind, Carrenti dominated that match for the most part.
Yeah, he was working hard the entire match. He had, he was being the aggressor. Then he had that late takedown for uh, Corinthians. Had the late takedown. He's up three to one late, and he had the quick escape there from Panoli. But you're up three to two. You have riding time too, Lou. So, I mean, you're essentially up by two points. And, and again, just that's a match you just cannot lose in that situation where you give up the late takedown and you nearly lost it in regulation due to the near fall points. You, I mean, you're lucky to get to overtime. So Rutgers' lead is 15-13, and we go to 125 pounds. And this is one of the marquee matchups of the afternoon. Sixth-ranked Devin Schroeder for Purdue, 19-4, and 10-2 and in duels, 5-2 and two versus ranked opponents. He's got five tech falls on the year. Last year, an NCAA qualifier. Ranked in the top 10 in the nation, coming out of high school at 125. Richard Jr. at a Grand Rapids, Michigan. And he gets the first two points here against Nick Aguilar, who's ranked 14th in the nation, 18 and 5, 6 and 1 in duels. He's got three pins in on the year and a point on the escape for Aguilar. So we've given a, given a lot of accolades to these two wrestlers, and this should be a terrific matchup. This is a huge matchup going forward in the duel now. If you're Rutgers, you're only up by two, and you need to, you need one of your guys to pick off a top-ranked guy. And, Aguilar, I know he had a tough loss on Friday to Cronin from Indiana, but don't forget, Cronin did knock off Schroeder earlier this year. Cronin's no slouch, and if you need a bounce back win for Aguilar, here's a perfect time for it. Knock off a top 10 guy. It was a tough loss for Aguilar on Friday night. He lost 4-2 to two to Indiana's Liam Cronin. Aguilar, fourth-ranked recruit in the nation coming out of high school in California where he was state champ there. Last year, redshirted. Shot there by Schroeder. See if Aguilar can scramble now, grab an ankle. He's going to lock around the waist. He'll go to the ankle now. And Aguilar's a good, is a big scrambler too, like Alvarez. We're going to see soon, but Schroeder is too tough in these, in these situations. That's twice now. Schroeder's been able to get a takedown off of these scrambles. Schroeder gets two points there. He goes up four to one. One minute left in the first period. Definitely quieted down after that disappointing loss for Carrente at heavyweight. And if you're if you're Rutgers again, you're up 15-13 in this duel. You have two matches after this one. We're gonna go down to the wire, and you're, you're favored at 133 with Alvarez. Might need bonus points there. And then of course it, it, it likely comes down to true freshman Jojo Aragona. 30 seconds left in the first period. And you see, I gotta try to get out for one here. Is, Shorter build up over a minute of riding time now. Good job by Shorter to follow Aguilar on that roll through attempt. Ten seconds. So the first period comes to an end, and Devin Schroeder controlled that first period, no question. Yes, he is up four to one. So Aguilar's going to choose neutral. He doesn't want to hang around bottom on Schroeder. So if you're Aguilar, at this point, you got to hope you, you, you're, you're, the way you're going to score in this match, you got to get a couple takedowns. Schroeder takes a shot there. Aguilar backs away. Good shot by Schroeder. He's able to suck in that leg, and now we go to that treetop position. See that guy screen again. This was Schroeder's won this position twice already. And he's got to hook around that waist. Got to watch that. Da got to watch that danger call too from after if you're Aguilar. But and Schroeder's too tough right now on top. Gets two more points. He's up six-one. Rutgers beat Purdue last year, 22 to 15. That was at Purdue. Scarlet Knights won six of ten bouts. And Rutgers leads the series 4 0. Purdue has not beaten Rutgers. So the Boilermakers trying to knock off the Scarlet Knights for the first time here today. And this is one this is one of the teams that Rutgers has owned since joining the Big Ten. For the 2014-15 season. Purdue's program really is come on over the last couple of years under Tony Erzlin. Last year had eight national qualifiers. This year, as we said, 10 and 2, 3 and 1 in the conference. Well, they can get, they can get eight, eight national qualifiers again, Lou, and because of where some of these guys are ranked, and you're talking about a couple
couple guys that could be all Americans. I mean, at this point, you're looking, if you're Purdue, you may, you may be thinking about a top 10 finish at Nationals this year. 15 seconds, stall warning issued against Rutgers' Nick Aguilar. He's down six to one in the riding time, way up for Schroeder at 240. And yeah, Aguilar already got hit with that stall warning just before, just now, and you know, he's not, not doing much on bottom. And Schroeder's gonna go down. He's up by five, essentially six with the riding time. You get out for one, you're up by seven. So, if it, again, Lou, if you're, if you're Aguilar right now, I mean, unless you pull out something big, I mean, you, at this point, you don't, you don't want to give up bonus points. If you're thinking about the team score, bonus points would be huge for Purdue if they, if they get a major here. They're up by two, going into the final two bouts. Got to keep wrestling tough if you're Aguilar. We're underway in the third. Difference in the match so far. Of course, the, the injury to Christian Bruner. And don't forget, two, two of the bout wins for Rutgers today. One's a pin from Jackson Turley. And the other was the six points because of the injury default. Pagano winning over Bruner. I mean, you can, it's a... It's, uh, it's a moot point now whether Pagano actually scored that late ta or that, that takedown to possibly go up two to one, but Pagano was in that match, and that's a match Rutgers could have pulled off an upset. But you know, just by, just by the way it rolls, in, they, they have the situation where they get six points out of it due to the injury default. You gotta take advantage of it for the Scarlet Knights. Aguilar working hard here. He's down six to one. With 105 remaining, he's been able to Bring down the riding time under two minutes. He's got a good ride, but sure going to come back into him. Again, the coaches always say one, not two. You don't want to give up a reversal here if you're Aguilar. Got to keep fighting here in this scramble. Hold him on, go, go to that crotch lock. 35 seconds. A reversal here is huge for Schroeder. If he can get it, and there it is. He's up eight to one. You don't want to get to put to your back either if you're Aguilar. You've got to be careful. He's going to that belly. He's got a hold of an ankle. If he can come through and get a reversal himself. Gotta come through the back. Got some time. Got to keep turning. Man, that's just tremendous by Schroeder. Get Aguilar off balance. They're gonna call. Wow, they're gonna call a stalemate there. Aguilar, Aguilar not happy about that one. Aguilar flips Schroeder away in disgust. Uh, that's a, to me, that's a premature stalemate call. Both wrestlers still working there. Aguilar trying to improve his position. Schroeder fighting and trying to get him off balance. It's a bit of a quick whistle. Only 15 seconds left. You see Schroeder on that far claw with his right hand, just able to follow Aguilar on those Granby rolls. Final five seconds. Aguilar trying to come through. Oh, watch the defensive pin. Oh, my goodness, that was close. I think Schroeder just got saved by the buzzer. Oh, Aguilar had Schroeder on his back, but he ran out of time. As the time expires. Oh, my goodness, that was close. And that's a, that's a huge, that, those are huge bonus points right there for Purdue with the major decision. So Schroeder gets the major, and Purdue leaps back into the lead. Boilermakers are up 17 to 15 with only two bouts remaining. So we go to 133. Travis Ford Melton for Purdue, 13 and 7. Freshman out of Monty, Illinois. He's got four pins on the year, going up against 10th ranked Sammy Alvarez. 18 and 6 out of St. Joe's Montvale. Friday defeated. Caden Rooks, major decision there, win for Sammy Alvarez. You probably need the same thing again here. You, you give up bonus points to Purdue in that last match, and you, if you're Rutgers, you want to counter it with at least a major decision here from Alvarez. Take a two-point lead going into the final bout. And as long as Alvarez wins, I mean, it's going to come down to JoJo Aragona, 141 for the Scarlet Knights. Purdue, which won 37 to four against Maryland. On Friday night, much tougher today against the Scarlet Knights, of course. It's a big spot for these young bucks, too. 
especially Alvarez and Aragona coming up, and you have two true freshmen. Can they step up in these big moments? We saw Jackson Turley at 165 get that pin. Redshirt freshman Billy Janzer getting the overtime victory. Purdue has a big win this year in the conference. They beat Northwestern, which was ranked in the top 15 at the time. Boilermakers are three and one in the conference. The lone loss, of course, to number one, Iowa, which <laughs> it's nothing to be ashamed of. Every no, the, the, way, the way Iowa's seems wrestling to lose this year. Iowa. <laughs> Iowa actually won that match 41 to nothing. <laughs> Shows you how good that Iowa team it's, is. It's, it's tough to get a shutout in college wrestling. This is a good, wrestling, per, good Purdue team. Low leg single there from Alvarez. Yeah, here's that treetop position again. So Ford Mellon's going to scramble, go lock around the waist. Alvarez is going to work, has that ankle, going to try to bring it down to the mat. Going to bring one to the mat, elevate the other. So we're going to get a stalemate here. There's really no movement. Minute seven remaining in the first period in a key match here at 133. Oh, that's a good shot, Melton. Good counter, though, from Alvarez to defend it off. They're back under those two, those, uh, those underhooks. Got one on the right side there. Well, the Knights, if they want to knock off the Boilermakers here this afternoon, have to win these last two matches. Alvarez likes these under, loves this underhook position when he comes out head to head with his opponents. See if he can do something with it. He's trying to shoot that right arm off the back. Alvarez is. I mean, we're going another stalemate here. Stalemate. Neutral. Start neutral. Sammy Alvarez, of course, highly recruited out of high school out of St. Joe's, third ranked recruit in the nation. Originally signed with North Carolina State. And that's a big, I mean, you, I, guess, I guess you can call it a flip because he was actually about to be enrolled there. Yeah. Uh, but again, I was, I was big for the Scarlet Knights program to get him staying home and. It's paying off big time here. You know, top 10 wrestler in the country is a true freshman. Great career in New Jersey high school wrestling. Going to try to get out of this headlock position. Good defense as Ford Mellon tried to throw him by. Good snap down there from Alvarez right in the period. Ooh, we're getting a little extracurriculars out here. <laughs> it's, getting, it's getting tense in here. First period comes to an end. No score here between Travis Ford Milton and Sammy Alvarez. Ford Melton's not ranked, but he's a solid wrestler. He's 13 and 7 on the year. Ford Melton on top two minutes, second period, 130. Ford Melton on top here to begin the second period. And these two have not wrestled each other before. Good cutaway there by Alvarez to take the lead. But Alvarez is 2 0 against common opponents. And Ford Melton 2 1. They've both beaten. King Sandoval and Caden Rooks, but Ford Mellon actually won and won against Rooks this year. Is that against Alvarez, you live and die by this scramble. It's a good shot by Ford Melton, but see Alvarez go right back to both those angles in this, in this scramble position. If he can just keep prying on him, get his feet free. Nicely done by Alvarez. He can finish this. Nice. There he gets two. That goes up three nothing. That was beautiful. See, that's the way he scrambled. Oh, he's got, he's got this tight. See if he can tilt him. He's cranking on that leg. We can just keep clawing at the head here. That was beautifully done by Alvarez. He just kept prying on those ankles and eventually got his feet free. That's a huge swing right there for Alvarez getting up 3 nothing. Inside a minute remaining in the second. Alvarez trying to flip Ford Melton over. With all these boots in. And going in, you would want bonus points from Alvarez. It would be huge towards the team score, but at least the win will give you the lead. Headed into the final bout. And the crowd wants stalling on Ford Melton. This Rutgers crowd going to let you hear it. And 30 seconds remaining. Rutgers will be on top on the stalemate. Alvarez up 3 nothing. Hook so that left leg around, get those boots in, and try to get Ford Mellon back down flat. See, Alvarez trying to just chop at these arms, and Ford Mellon just, just staying in this tripod position. 
Alvarez is kind of content, though. He's, he's, he's working. Ford Mellon just kind of standing there. See, Alvarez is going to try to split him down now, spread him out. There you go. Nicely done with both boots in. That's nicely done. And final seconds, though, tick away in the second. And we'll go to the third. Sammy Alvarez up 3-0. He's got a minute 15 of riding time in his favor. There's that takedown again, finishing off there for Alvarez. And you can see Ford Mellon's going to go neutral here. To start this third period, does not want to stay on bottom with Alvarez. Alvarez, of course, a very tough wrestler on top. Ford Mellon being aggressive here. Oh, good job oh. by Alvarez. Sammy Alvarez with a brilliant. Two points there. Try to stuff his head now. See if he can try to get it. He's looking, looking for a cradle, but kind of out of position at the moment. That was a great job by Alvarez to use his to use Ford Mellon's momentum against him and just slip by for that takedown. Try to pry this arm out. Ford Mellon did a good job hanging on to that leg of Alvarez and probably blow this one dead in a second. They're close to that boundary, but Alvarez still working. Ford Mellon trying to turn back into him for a reversal, but... And there's a stalemate. Stops the clock with 57 seconds remaining. So athletic record, Pat Hobbs. He's, in, he's intently watching that match, uh, <laughs> match side right there. We see the takedown there from Alvarez. And <laughs> the Hobbs is a baffle. He's like, it, whoa, you can do that? Rutgers <laughs> athletic director, Pat Hobbs. Matt side. 57 seconds. It's always funny seeing facial reactions from some of these people <laughs> in, the, in the crowd when Especially a guy like Alvarez pulls off something impressive like that. See, Alvarez trying to crank him over. He wants to I mean, he knows the He knows the situation. You want to get bonus points. You want to try to get as many team points as possible headed into that final bout. You pry Ford Mellon over. He's up 5 0. He's got the riding time. They're essentially 6 0. They want to stall on Ford Mellon. It's 30 seconds. There's a stall. But it's only the first one, so stall no points. Warning. Issued with 30 seconds left. Alvarez looking to put Rutgers back on top. If so, it will all come down to that final bout at 141. Looks like it is going to come down to that. Alvarez not going to be able to get bonus points here. A solid victory, though. As he wraps this one up. So Sammy Alvarez improves to 19-6 and six on the year. He defeats Travis Ford Melton. And Rutgers regains the lead in the match. Well, here we go, Lou. Down to the final bout. Another true freshman. Scarlet Knights go up by one. It's 18-17 Rutgers. And it all comes down to this. 141 pounds. Parker Phileas of Purdue. A tough competitor. 14 and five on the year. Nine and two in duels. Redshirt sophomore out of Harvard, Montana, four-time state champion in the state of Montana against Jojo Aragona, 10 and six out of Pope John High School in Sparta. This is where these young guys grow up right here, Lou. You saw Alvarez come up big as a true freshman. There, of course, redshirt freshman Billy Janzer. Overtime victory earlier in the match. Jackson Toe, the true freshman at 165, got a pin. Huge for the team points, and now Final battle of the afternoon. It's going to come down to yet another young buck for the Scarlet Knights squad. Aragona's been up and down this year. He had a hot start, but I'm trying to pick it back up lately. So the winner, very simple. The winner here, Phileas wins, Purdue wins the match. Aragona wins, it's a Rutgers victory. And you don't want to be overly aggressive early on, so you don't want to, you don't want to make these early mistakes. Aragona solid so far in his stance. Maintaining in the center of the mat. Seen a couple shots already. Minute gone by, a little over a minute gone by here in the first period. Final match of the afternoon. Rutgers trying to win their ninth match of the season. Last year, Scarlet Knights finished 12 and 6. Good shot there from Aragona. Trying to lock it up. He's going to come up with it now. Aragona, locked tight, 
Dragged Phileas back into the mat here. Doing everything right. Phileas just whizzing hard, bouncing, bouncing on that leg. There we go. Got to keep dragging him in. You see Coach Goodell aiming for him. Brought him down, but good sprawl there from Phileas. Get that leg away. There goes. Got to keep working. Gotta, you have to be able to pull him in here. Give yourself some more space. Keep working. And he gets two. Aragona goes up 2 nothing, And then both wrestlers out. If you're looking at Coach Goodell in the corner for Rutgers, that was not a dance. That was uh, just stay loose here. Yeah, be calm. Keep bouncing around your feet. Good solid 2 nothing start here for, for Aragona. He goes on top here. Aragona hanging on for Phileas. Yeah, keep driving. That's a, good, that's a good job by Aragona. Drive and he has to work up the body here. And they're both out. The new bench wanted a lock in hands. And now the referees are going to conference. Let's go back to that takedown there for Aragona. And they're working gonna, it. They're going to look at this, I think. Yeah, they're, they're, they're going to look for lock in hands. If we fin let's keep looking at the takedown here from Aragona. See that right arm come around the waist. Eventually works its way down. And Goodell is not, not too pleased with this review. But Aragona, a nice start. Particularly with that takedown. But what they are going to look at is if he was locking hands at any point when Aragona was trying to return Phileas to the mat and then eventually took him out of bounds. I, 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 I'm not quite sure where it might have occurred. Let's see. Hands are locked here. That's legal. It's legal. It's legal. It's got to be, hmm, I don't know. Driving here. Not quite sure where the Purdue bench might have saw it. You see, you see Coach Goodell not pleased at all with the, even the, the possibility of locking hands. Be, if it is locking hands for Aragona, that'll be a penalty point for Phileas. Rutgers trying to win here today. The next Saturday, they'll be at Madison Square Garden. Taking on Michigan. Here's a look one more time. This is legal right here. They're not on the mat. I, I, I mean, yeah. maybe right at the end right there, they might have seen it. But, yeah, the, the call on the mat was confirmed. There was no, there was no lock in hands. No call. So we said next week, Rutgers taking on 25th-ranked Michigan at the Garden. That should be a that's special gonna be, that's, day. That's going to be a nice atmosphere with the doubleheader with basketball. Yeah. The way the basketball team's playing this year, and that should be a bit of a home court advantage for basketball as well. So a chance for a chance to do for Rutgers to actually knock off Michigan this year. They've been a, they've been a, tough, cut, they've been a tough cookie against the Scarlet Knights since they've joined the Big Ten in terms of dual meets. Escape point registered by Phileas. It's two to one. And Scarlet Knights will be back here on February 7th. We'll be here as well as the Fighting Illini of Illinois come in. Illinois is going to be a tough match as well this year. And again with Northwestern on the, on the 14th as well. Just a good, you know, not, not, not the uh, traditional powers of the Big Ten coming into the rack this year, but all, all, always a solid Big Ten home schedule for the Scarlet Knights. And Purdue. He's got two tough matches in a row of upcoming both ranked opponents on Friday. They're both home, 11th ranked Minnesota, and then Wisconsin ranked eighth next weekend. So it doesn't get any easier for the Boilermakers. So we go to the second period, and Jojo Aragona on top by the score of 2-1 to one in the deciding match of the afternoon. Good, Matt return there from Aragona. Nice way to start the second period. Aragona trying to build up that riding time as well. He's up to 40 seconds. Phileas trying to scramble out of it. Aragona hanging tough. Nicely done by Aragona. He keeps working. He's improving his position from top to bottom on top of Ara um, on top of uh, Phileas. And it's a good way to keep him flat. And the crowd rises to its feet. They sense it. Aragona has his riding time up over a minute. And they know what's at stake here, Lou. Win for Aragona. Rutgers wins the dual meet. And it would be a big win. Purdue coming in ranked 10th. In the nation. And both wrestlers out again. 
<laughs> Matt side fans are loving the effort. <laughs> Remaining in the second period. Philly is definitely, definitely being a pain on bottom right now for Eric Gona. As he just keeps rolling around and working his way up, and they're going to eventually you know, go out of bounds here. Eric Gona does have that riding time over a minute. Purdue bench one locked hands again. There's an escape point for Philly. Purdue bench, I mean, they're, they're clamoring for a locked hands call. Philly is. Gets the point. He's tied it at two. And Aragona has the riding time. It's at 115. It's not too far ahead of one minute. So be thinking ahead. If you're Aragona, if it, stay, if it stays 2 2 in this period, and you go down to start the third, you have to get out fast to preserve that riding time as well. 40 seconds. Aragona taking a shot there, but Phileas counters. You gotta be aware of where you are on the mat as well. You gotta keep working for Aragona. Philly is keeping that foot in. Good job, Aragona, to use his weight and his hips. Flat now, Philly is right there going out of bounds. Final 30 seconds of period two. Big spot here for the true freshman. He's controlling the center of the mat as well. He's maintaining that aggressiveness. Trying to keep Phileas off balance with these shots. Ten seconds left. And the second period comes to an end. Tied at two. And it all comes down to this. Talk about drama. I mean, you saw Coach Goodell ask Eric Gona what he wants to do, either go down or neutral. And he said, and he said I want to go down. And Goodell said, all right, well, you have to get up fast. And the Rutgers fans rise here at the rack, cheering on JoJo Aragona. See some tough, toughness on top for Aragona. Now he's going bottom. Again, 115 on the riding time clock. He's got to preserve that. He's got to get up fast and get out. And both wrestlers out. If he keeps doing that, Lou, they might be able to make a case for Phileas a stall warning if Aragona's trying to get out and Phileas is driving him out of bounds. But riding time at 112. Again, escape point does give Aragona the lead, but you want to preserve that riding time to essentially give yourself a two-point lead. See if Phileas can bring it down. Aragona trying to switch on the way down. You can't get tilted here if you're Aragona. Good job of rolling back to his belly. The riding time's going to go away now, so if you're Aragona, you get out, you take the lead. And at 35 left. Even if Phileas rides out Aragona, he can't get a riding time point, so if he rides him out, we would go to sudden victory. Aragona's got to get out from bottom. It's one thing Coach Goodell's been stressing with Aragona the past couple weeks. He's got to be able to work back up to his base here. There it is. So I've been Phileas again is good getting flat again. Just chopping at those arms. Wow, that's a, I can't believe they gave a stall win to Eric Goni. I mean, he's, try, he's trying to climb up to his base. That's a, I don't know. He's up to his base now. They can just keep crawling. He's trying to work up. He's standing up. Both wrestlers out. Tied at two, 55 seconds left. Riding time not a factor. And again, Phileas can't build up over a minute, so Aragon has to get out. If he does get out, though, he's got to be careful because he does have that stall warning against him. He can't just sit back. Listen to the crowd here at the rack. I keep coming forward. Don't get flat again. There you go. Stand up. There it is. He cut away at the hips. Good mat return from Phileas. That's where you don't want to be if you're going to get flat again. Got to scoop those, got to scoop those knees up. There it is. He's up now. Phileas, just a good mat return. Wrestler's out with 37 seconds left. See the instructions from the Rutgers bench from assistant coach Tyler Graffin. Donnie Pritz left. Still got time again. I mean, the, I mean, I mean, the later the escape, the more dramatic it'll be, Lou, but. To clinch the match, but if you're going, you, still, you know what you have to do. He's going to roll through. 
coming on out. And both wrestlers go down. Crowd didn't like that one, of course. Phillies driving Eric going to the gym floor. And Goodell wants, wants more energy out of Eric going to come back to the center here. 31.8 seconds. You see the Rutgers sideline, the Rutgers bench. Nah, Aragon went a little too early right there. False start. Caution against Aragona. We're trying to get in this comfortable set here. Goodell stressing his guy. He's trying to tell Aragona to stay set here. Got to wait for that whistle. That's already two cautions. Get another one. You give a point. Got to be careful. 30 Th seconds left. Julius knows he has to ride him out. They're going to try to tripod up. He's going to come through on that switch. Maybe reversal here. Pick that leg up. Aragona. Coming through. Oh, he's got him on his back. No danger call either. There goes to get that leg free. Philly is struggling. Trying to tell Aragona to swim through. There's only two seconds, and that will do it. So we will. Oh, my goodness. We will go to overtime crowd. What a thunderous. Oh, Goodell's going to challenge. Yeah, Goodell. I think he's he might be challenging for that danger call as Aragona came through. Watch this. He's going to take this leg right there so the back's exposed. Not stuck for a defensive pin, but wow, he, I think he's, he might be clearly at an angle right there for a danger call, and the referee wasn't even swiping. It's going to depend how long. Ooh, man. I, oh. I, it, it, there should, me, wow, I mean, there, there should be swipes there. for if, if that's a danger call, Lou, that would be a takedown for Aragonia, and he would win 4-2. to two. They are showing the replay on the overhead scoreboard here. At Rutgers, and the fans are they're, they're, obviously they're, they're, they're up beside themselves right now. <laughs> the fans have uh, let their opinion be known. That danger call comes into effect if that back's exposed, and I mean, Felix is clearly exposing his back there, and they want the swipes for the. Well, I mean, here too. You see, <laughs> Coach Cadell said, "Stay there, try to swim over." He had, to, he had that brick ready the entire time. I mean, you, you, you have nothing to lose no. there. No points awarded. Wow. And it was a good will, challenge. We'll go to OT. That was close. So, can't get much more dramatic than this. Sudden victory, overtime oh for the goodness. match. Don't rest on your heels if you're Aragona. And that scramble again. He's got him flat now. He's rolling on top. Got to keep working. There's that, there's that tree top from Phileas. Got to pry at this angle for Aragona. Got to come around. Keep rolling with it. Got to take an ankle. Come on up. Got to be careful. Roll through. There you go. Scramble. And there's the two points for Phileas. And Purdue defeats Rutgers as Parker Phileas wins a huge match and defeats JoJo Aragona. The Boilermakers win it 20 to 18. He saw Aragona try to roll through on that takedown attempt, try to grab hold of an ankle and just could not do it. Phileas, that's a, gut, a gutted out type of victory there for Phileas. And, oh, man, that's a disappointing end for the Skrull Knights. What a win for Purdue. Back and forth all day and fitting, Lou. A, a match as tight as this came down to the final bout in overtime. Man, that's a, bit, that's a missed opportunity for the Skrull Knights, but a big victory for Purdue. So the Boilermakers improved to 11 and 2 on the year, and the 10th ranked team in the nation improves to 4 and 1 in the Big Ten. The Scarlet Knights a disappointing loss as they drop to 8 and 4, now 3 and 3 in the conference. I do want to clarify something on that. So that last challenge there for Coach Goodell, he was looking for danger, but I think the, what, what the referee and I was informed by uh, my good buddy Jason Bryan, you, you, they're actually referees are going to rule off. No, th th there is no danger call when it when the referee or the, when the wrestlers did not start in neutral. So at that point, even though Phileas's back was exposed there, Aragon was going for reversal or even an escape. There is going to be no danger call because Phileas is technically in control at that point because they, there was no neutral. So 
Goodell threw it out just to try it, but I guess they, they, they did clarify that rule at the end, so hence there was no uh, call for a danger call. It ended up being a takedown for Aragon, and then that's why they went to overtime and there was no points awarded. All right, exciting match here at the Rutgers Athletic Center on this Sunday afternoon. For Nick Costco, our entire BTN Plus team, another outstanding job by them today. Once again, your final score, Purdue defeats Rutgers by the score of 20 to 18.